Like me, many of you are staying safe at home or are sheltering in place, whatever terminology you're using, because of this pandemic that's sweeping around the world and making a lot of people sick. Here in California, we are under a stay-at-home directive from our governor, Gavin Newsom. So I got to thinking, what are some ways that we can cook at home without having to go out. We can go out if we have to buy food or say go to the doctor or fill a prescription. I don't wanna go out. I wanna use just what I have on hand. Can I make a nice decent little meal solely using ingredients that I have on hand? Not that you're gonna have all the same ingredients, but maybe this will give you some ideas. Being inventive, make a nice meal for yourself and take time doing it because if you're stuck at home like I am, you've got a lot of time on your hands. So pamper yourself a little bit with something a little fancy, something you can enjoy because <laughs> we need it now with this living under this, this worry about uh, this pandemic that's going around. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to make pasta from scratch because I have flour and I have eggs, but I got to thinking about it. What if you don't have a pasta machine? See, I've got a pasta machine. Nice one. What if you don't have one? Well, maybe you've got a rolling pin. I've got a rolling pin. What if you don't have a rolling pin? Well, maybe you've got a can of something. This is uh, actually tomatoes. I'm not going to use this for my pasta. Though. I'm saving this for another time, but maybe you could roll the pasta with a, a can. What I'm going to use is a plastic bottle. I'm going to see if I can use a plastic bottle to roll my pasta dough. I used to, when I was in college, I used a wine bottle, but that always made me nervous because what if I press too hard and the bottle broke under my hands and then I have shards of glass in my hands? No, I can't take that. I've had enough stitches in my hands down through the years so i'm going to use a plastic bottle so and then i'm going to show you uh, how i'm going to dress my pasta to make it kind of fancy because i have some cooked chicken that i'm going to use to have some protein as part of this so anyways let's start cooking i'm going to make my pasta first and i've got to tell you i do things my way some people say to put the flour on the counter make a little well in the middle break the egg into that well and then working from the sides you work the flour in and I don't do it that way I do it my way I use a bowl because I can take this to the sink and easily wash it so I have one egg here I'm just going to make enough pasta for a good helping for myself double triple this recipe uh, for as many people as you need to so I have one large egg and then I have one half cup of flour. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil in there. Maybe about a teaspoon or so. And then I'm going to put a little pinch of salt in there. And then use a fork to get that mixed up. Now I can add my flour, and this is by volume, one half cup. By weight, it came to 70 grams. So, and this is regular all-purpose flour. If you have pasta flour, uh, durum wheat semolina, that'll make a more al dente pasta. Uh, oftentimes I'll use half that and half this flour uh, to make a little bit more tender pasta. I'm going to use all-purpose flour because that's something that most of us probably have in our cupboard. But as I said earlier, not everybody has all these ingredients. I'm going to work that in. That's not going to be enough. I know that. But that's how I always start. And as you can see, it's a very wet pasta. So now, or wet dough, now I have my container of flour and I'm just going to put in a little bit at a time and work that in until this is dry enough that I can move it to the counter and start kneading it. And it'll probably still need more flour. I kind of do it by feel when it feels about right. I know that it's prepared okay now 
Move this to the counter. And yes, that's a jet going overhead. It's going to be sticky right now. But that's okay. Here's a flower duster. Dust my fingers first, get some of that dough off my fingers. Dust the flour. And then keep dusting it with flour as I need to if it's sticky and to work in more flour. The half cup is never enough. But that feels pretty good right there. It's a little bit sticky, but not bad. A little bit sticking to my hands. I don't want to work in too much because I'm going to hand roll this. So I don't want the dough to be too dry, too firm, it'll be too difficult to roll. And you just need to knead this enough so that it's a smooth dough. This is not like making bread where you knead it to hook up the proteins to have gluten chains so that it'll rise and capture bubbles. In this case, all we're doing is getting it smooth. Okay, I'm going to let that rest a little bit while I wash my hands. Yet again, I've been washing my hands a lot with this coronavirus going around. I'm ready to start rolling my pasta. I'm going to dust that with a little bit of flour. And by the way, this thing that I call a flour duster, they have these on Amazon as powder sugar shaker, something like that. It comes with a plastic lid. I don't work with powdered sugar very often, so I just call it a flour duster. And I'm going to roll this out by hand quite a bit here before I start trying to roll it, if it'll work, with my plastic jar. And this appears to be working. It's going to take a while, but hey, we're stuck at home, right? We might as well do little projects that take time. Who cares how long it takes? As long as we have the time at home and can do little home projects that make us feel good. I think creating nice meals is a nice pastime for feeling good about ourselves, especially if we make things that the boyfriend or the girlfriend or the kids or whomever your partner happens to be, husband or wife, is really happy. <laughs> that, that's working. I haven't done anything like this since my college days. Look at that. Starting with one egg, and I've got a nice piece of pasta dough working here. You know, I'm satisfied with that. I've got a nice piece here. I'm going to let that sit for a little bit. And I'm going to start heating up some water on my stove so I can cook this. And by the way, this cooks really, really quickly because it's already got moisture in it from the egg. It's not like cooking dry pasta where you have to get the moisture in. This cooks in like a minute or two. I moved my pasta sheet to a cutting board so I can cut it up. This was one chicken thigh. By the way, this is a good way to use up some leftovers. If you've got a small amount of food like this, mix it with something like pasta and make a whole new dish out of it. Now, how do I want to cut this? I'm thinking, how about fettuccine? Because I like that. So I'm going to cut these into long, flat noodles. Kind of narrow. Let's see if I can show that to you. 
So like that. As I said, I have water heating on the stove and then we'll talk about dressing the pasta after it's cooked. Meanwhile, I got plenty of pasta here to cut up. You can cut this any different way you like. There are lots of different cuts. You don't need a pasta machine to do this. You could cut wide noodles if you want. You could even cut um, pappadella, which is big, really big wide noodles. So as you can see, my water is coming to the boil. So I'm going to put my pasta in there, my noodles, my fettuccine. And just briefly stir that up and bring that back to the boil. Because these are not dry noodles, all we're doing really is cooking the egg and the flour. These will cook in one to two minutes. That pasta was a little bit thick because I couldn't roll it as thin as I could with a pasta machine. So I'm going to cook these for two minutes. I didn't put any salt in the water. You don't need to because the salt in the pasta dough, when you cook dry pasta, you need to put salt in the water because the dry pasta has no salt in it, most of it. And when it cooks, it absorbs that salted water and that's what gives it some flavor. In this case, this is not going to absorb much water. We're just cooking the egg and the flour. So you put the salt in the pasta dough. I put my chicken in a skillet and I had some pesto in the freezer. So I thawed that out. I used about half of that packet of pesto. This is my cooked and drained pasta. And then I'm going to put a little extra virgin olive oil in there. Actually more than a little because that'll taste good. And I'm going to stir this up. I still have more of that pesto if I need it. Maybe not. That's starting to look pretty good right now. I don't have any cheese and I don't want to go shopping. Not yet. <laughs> Doesn't that look good? Chicken and pesto pasta. I need to taste that with a fork to see if it needs any salt. It probably will. So there it is. The pan is sizzling. I've had that overheat to get this heated up, especially because that pesto was cold from the refrigerator. I'm ready to plate and then see what this tastes like. I did taste it and yes, it needed some salt. Got a bowl ready for myself. It's not a lot of chicken in this. As you can see, it isn't very visible. You could dress this up with more chicken. If I had some shrimp, I don't. I could make this with some shrimp. I might as well just put it all in there. And I don't have any cheese to put on top, but that's one of the reasons why I decided to use that pesto. So there it is, ready to eat. <laughs> that looks so good. I think I'm really going to enjoy this. It's not the most diet friendly food, all those carbs, but with the situation we're living in right now where we have to stay at home all the time, I think it's fine to pamper ourselves a little bit with some delicious comfort food. Perfect. That is just al dente enough. I was a bit concerned because I wasn't using pasta flour, which would make it more al dente. But that is fine. The salt is just right. The flavor is just good. So excuse me, I'm going to go enjoy a late lunch of my chicken and homemade pasta from scratch.